the meet's now underway, right? Uh, Honestly, I think those guys are probably, they're all in their own world. While the girls are racing, they're going to be doing their warm-up. They're going to be focusing on their own thing. If anything, when you kind of hear that, you, you, you maybe you, you hear the award ceremony, it almost makes you more nervous because you think they're on the other side of the race where I want to be. They're on the podium. They're, they've already done what needs to be done. So um, in that situation, I would generally try to just stay in your own world. Just think about your own race. Don't acknowledge that anything else is happening anywhere else. Um, you know, keep, keep your world really small. Focus on the next few moments. Well, working our way down the boxes here as the uh, 204 athletes, uh, same numbers we saw on the girls. Again, a reflection of the largest number of entries in NXN history here in 2018. It has now come down to this on the first day of December. It's the final race of the year, Nike Cross National Boys Championship Final. The boys race is underway here at Glendevere Golf Club in Portland, NXN 2018. Can you grab this? Yep. Just a wonderful wide shot picture here on this opening stretch of the race course on this golf course. Perhaps one of the flattest parts of the race as they will definitely see the undulations here shortly in this early part of the race. And again, what we will not see in this boys race, I suspect is anything close to what we saw in that first stage of the girls race where we have one athlete, in the girls case, Caitlin Tui, that went out to the front. But a very strong surge as all of the uh, favorites trying to get in position early on. And the rest of the team's beginning to lock into their roles as uh, the team race obviously up for grabs for those squads and every place finishes matter from one to five. Looks like Carter Cheeseman from Texas might be our early leader there in the light blue. This field, again, just like the girls, has so much talent. There are 27, 27 individual state champions in the race and also 12 state team champions in the field. Now, the, the South region was kind of like the SEC this year, just everyone beating up on everyone else. I think it actually gives us kind of a hard hard time trying to figure out who really is the top the top dog in that region and who's going to be a, a, a contender for the win because you know, those guys switch back and forth all throughout the year. So, Rich, is that Edwin Gomez out in front? I think it's uh, 2.30 it is, it, indeed, indeed it is. It is. So yes. the uh, sophomore. I believe uh, he was third at the region, if I'm not mistaken. A little bit of a bold move here early on. And, uh, you know, I suppose... Uh, you know, as part of race tactics, if you're feeling good on a given day, you know, potentially put yourself out there and uh, try to create some space. And just as I uh, tried not to predict that the early part of the boys race would look anything like the girls, this looks a lot like what Caitlin did, Tui did early on in the girls race. Well, one of the interesting things that, that can happen in a race like this, which I don't think you would have seen in years past, you know, maybe 10, 15 years ago, is all these guys know each other so well and they know kind of who they're looking for and who they're going to be competing against. And I don't think a lot of them would have counted Gomez in. Right. And so I think at, we'll see if they reel him back in here. But you could almost see a point where they think, think, oh, well, he's not a contender. Let's look at each other. And they give him a little more gap than maybe they should. And you can see his arm carriage definitely dropping here as the field begins to be swallowed and bring a reel back in. And you can just see the mass of humanity right there. It's just amazing. Coming up at 1K, and you see there's got to be at least 120 kids within about maybe six seconds of the lead. Now, uh, Jacob Hunter told us you can make or break your race in your first 400 meters. I'm not sure I agree with him. As you look at that field, I mean, from first to last, we, it, what is it, 10-second split? So you can make up a lot of ground if you can find a little room. Um, that, over the course of this race. And that's Nick Foster in second from Michigan, Lower Peninsula Division I champion. He's signed for the University of Michigan, 405 on the track for the full mile. He's right there among the leaders. And on the inside there, you have Liam Anderson in the pink, Drew Bosley in the orange, and then Cole Hawker in the yellow, three of our favorites uh, up front early. Everyone looking for position to run on the race course. Alongside them, following them along, is our Elliot Heath. Elliot? Uh, yeah, we're here. You can tell even from the get-go here that it's going to be a different race makeup uh, relative to the girls. The guys have packed up very tightly, super dense through probably the first 60, 70 spots. It's just a mass of, of runners. Um, no one running out front, and now we're going eight wide. Everyone just looking left and right, queuing off each other. No one really looking to put a move out front. You see Cole 
Carlos Brown being identified in that group. So the uh, early race leader has now come back to the field, Gomez, but uh, staying in that pack and a strong field of runners here with uh, no one really wanting to take control. So it's now just all about sort of spacing. I I'm not sure this is tactical in the sense of being slow, but it, the race is definitely still searching for a leader who's going to take control. We can see uh, two Cal three Californians up there. Nico Young, who uh, uh, Rich pointed out to us earlier, he's right up front. And then I, I is that is that Matt Strangio on the far side there? That is Matt Strangio on the far right in the pink top. And Liam Anderson up there as well, the top finisher from last year to return for 2018, the third place finisher, so trying to make his second straight podium as well. Now, we, we've seen this over and over again in the boys' race. Uh, when you don't have a dominant figure, the race really doesn't start to develop until about a mile and a half when you get to the low point on the course. Because after that first K, it's pretty much all gradual downhill. Then you're going to go down a big hill, up a big hill, down, and then when you come up that big hill again, you're getting a mile and a half in, everyone, everyone's starting to feel it, and then the course starts to work against you, and that's when the strength really tells. Joe Wascom of the Northwest also among that grouping, wearing the Northwest green singlet. As he made a strong move, was the 4A state meet winner this year and a seasonal best 15-16. And you talked about that hill coming down. So uh, again, that group still fairly tight, but you can start now with that perspective of that camera shot shows there's a little bit of decompression going on amongst that large group of runners and some of those folks still having trouble with their footing here. It's been relatively dry since some early morning rain and so the course is holding up in very nice condition. And uh, we saw a succession of uh, kind of dark, dark pink jerseys, uh, which I believe are the Temecula boys. Looked like they were packing pretty well, and in the early scores we're getting, it looks like they indeed got out pretty decently. Yeah, but on top right now, through that first mile split, it is Littleton of Colorado. That's currently your leader at 228. Our defending champions, Purcellville from Virginia, and second at 264. Temecula of California, third at 306. Wheaton South, Illinois, fourth. 372 and Manlius 381 in fifth. Now Littleton, um, we I don't know if we talked in detail about them for the race, but they have two really good guys up, up front. And again, with the raw scores, that that could be helping them a little bit. The question for them it looks like probably their their fifth guy got out pretty darn well. If they're only at 228. Can can he hold it throughout this race? I did confirm in between races with our with our lead our chief timer Sean Laughlin. These actually are not raw scores. These are actually team scores right here. So the reason we see these high numbers is just that that massive humanity yep. right now is just just. But these are actual actual team scores with the individuals already pulled out. So Littleton L Littleton had their, it's their three through five that's that it was you felt probably held them back from being a real contender. They've gotten that well. Do they have the strength to hold it through the second tough part of this course? 4.43 was the split through the first mile for Strangio, Anderson, and Foster. Let's go back to the uh, man running right alongside or riding alongside the runners, Elliot Heath. Yeah, we're looking at very, very heavily dominated by the individuals up front, but you guys were talking about the team from Littleton. Uh, you see teammates one, two, side by side there. Uh, low sticks for them, but then also I can see their 3-4 in pretty good position, probably in the top 70 overall. So I think they're in good position, but no sign of a 5. But they're the only team that I think you could say has a very good presence towards the front of the race. Otherwise, we've got back and forth, a wall of individuals leading the way in the front of the race. We also saw up front there, that was uh, Josh Methner, the Illinois State Champion, only a junior, uh, and he's running actually for his team, Arlington, uh, known as known as Hersey during the season. We still haven't really seen the race break open yet, and this is generally where we do, up this up this steep hill again, but I don't know, we're still, what, 10 wide here? Yep, definitely, and we see, like I said, most of the big names in front. Also, we see a couple of individuals that are national at-large invitees that are in the mix. We see Nick Foster of Michigan there, Jack Stanley of New Jersey, also among the leaders there. We, uh, we got Sam, Sam Offolder of Percival here. It was interesting at the regional meet, I mean, he had finished pretty far ahead of Jacob Hunter, their number two guy, um, kind of in their previous races, but he, he ran with Hunter at the regional meet, and I was curious to know whether that was him holding back, saving himself for here, or uh, if Hunter had really stepped up, and it looks like 
Affolder is really uh, separated from Hunter, and, and he's going with the with the big dogs here. Drew Bosley in that hip, hip fifth number 218 now trying to make a little bit of a surge. And you were saying, Chris, in that stretch, they were all alongside. Now they begin to thin out and uh, start to go maybe two aside as they'll make some uh, turns here to the uh, next stage of the race. We're well into the uh, last third of the racing here at Glendevere for a NXN title in 2018. And that team title up for grabs as well. We'll have some updates here on the standings and the second mile split here shortly. And that's Nico Young in the all black junior from Newberry Park in California. And they were as national news in the last couple of weeks with all the fires in California. They started right there in Newberry Park. So they were actually affected by that by those conditions for a couple of weeks. They actually had to leave the area to find training elsewhere. You see Cole Sprout right there are Pre, a pre-race co-favorite, as well as Drew Bosley, Liam Anderson. So right there, all the big names, Easton Allred right there, currently the Millier screen from Denver, 299, also about third or fourth at this point in time. The deeper we get into this race with all these guys around, the more it's gonna test them mentally. We saw last year we had three guys up front attacking each other, attacking each other, attacking each other, and it was the guy who didn't attack, who saved himself for the last 400 meters, Aiden Troutner, who won the race. So how many of these guys who've been dreaming of this moment since last year, their time to take the title, are going to get maybe a little too anxious, make a move that where they, where they should save it for the end? Because as my old teammate Haken DeVries used to say, good guys take a long time to die. <laughs> Nico Young had the... Uh Official first place position after the two mile split in 944. Behind him, Sprout, Bosley, then Anderson, the top finisher from a year ago, and Allred rounding out the top five. Osting out of Massachusetts, who had uh, been again among the favorites, was in that sixth position, still in that pack. But you can see right there, our two mile split, our top eight are all within one second. And uh, boating well for the uh, Northwest squad, E.J. Holland, who's had a great tear of the last uh, month or so in the Oregon State Championship out of the Ashland area, then won the uh, border clash in that battle between Oregon and Washington. He's the tall figure in the green on the left side of picture, trying to keep the uh, legs running there as they start to hit some of the hills again. Yeah, we, we haven't said his name all year, all or all broadcast long, but no one has beaten him this year, and he right. may make us live to regret that decision to not feature him in the in the pre-race because he's he's up there in contention. Now, definitely coming into the postseason, looking at from our our committee, looking at invitations and so forth, and one thing that kept popping up also, just overall strength, was Evan Holland. He'd had no no major victories, but looking at the data, just a very very strong resume. So there you see Holland there, and we'll work our way back up to the front. Quickly check in again with Elliot Heap. This is starting to play out now. We've got some moves, serious moves being made. We've got three wide here with, uh, let's see, two, two team members and one individual. Um, also in the top pack, let's see, we've got a Newberry Park team, uh, Denver's number one, and then Littleton still with two individuals, probably scoring in the top ten for the team scoring. Um, still got Cole Hawker hanging on Chris's pick there of someone that might, you know, just respond to moves and if he's there, he might have a chance to close well. But we've got it really starting to string out here on the front. Easton Allred from Denver, he's made the first decisive bid in this race. He's really, he's really made the race happen here in the last two minutes. I would still say, I, would, I still wouldn't count out Cole Hawker there in fifth, but I really would like it this, in this position Liam Anderson, who showed us last year at this race that he can save a really strong finish for the last 400 meters when he moved from fourth into, or sorry, from fifth into third. Anderson now in that third position, twice the California D3 champion, the Stanford commit, maybe just kind of lying in wait here as they past the 13 minute mark, working their way down to the uh, southernmost point of the race course, working their ba way back towards the finish line. So we mentioned the fact that Easton Allred, your current leader, how he was ineligible for his high school team because he transferred this year, but now in postseason, he's eligible to go ahead and run for his club squad. At the Libertyville Invitational, a big meet locally in the neck of the woods, Cole Sprout, probably the best runner in the country coming into the season, yeah, he won that race at the varsity level. Easton Allred ran a faster time from a non-varsity race. That's what people said, who is this kid? Well, right here he's basically showing, he's, he's got definitely plenty in him. We have Anderson, Sprout, 
and Allred. Now Allred has to regather himself. He made that big commitment to make the move. He kind of probably felt like he was he was really making inroads, and now he's being challenged because at this level you always have to have more than one move to make. Nico Young in that fourth position, potentially hoping that uh, one of those three in front of him fall back a little bit, so he has an opportunity for a podium finish. Now coming into the last stages and the last climb of this NXN Championship for 2018. And will we see another move by Cole Sprout? He's testing Anderson on his right shoulder as here they come up the final two hills. Two of our favorites coming into the race, two guys we both know have great finishes. It's hard to pick between them at this point. And look at Anderson surge up that hill and Sprout trying to respond. As they now come into the visibility of the final stretch of the race course, they'll come down the tunnel. These were the pick two coming in, they've not disappointed. Sprout trying to hold on here, keep his spot at least currently in second. That's Hawker in third, moving up quickly. And our top returning finisher from last year, finishing third in 2017, will be the NXN champion in 2018, Liam Anderson. Cole Hawker with a strong finish there in second position. And Sprout will finish in third. That's our podium here in 2018. And now here comes the race, the finish for the rest and for that team race and an NXN crown. Hawker really ha hawked down second place there. I mean, we, that, that's kind of what we've seen from him all year long, that he's someone who, who kind of waits for that, that final straightaway. Um, and, but Liam Anderson, he was able to have that great final straightaway while still pushing for McKay out. And that truly is a sign of a great champion. Well, and again, another case where that experience from a year ago has to have helped him in preparing for that last stretch. And the gear he found on that first of two rises up those last two hills was all the difference he needed to get ahead. And he really ran over the top of that steep section there, which is the key. It's not just how fast you do run that five meters, it's how fast can you come out of it to run to the next. Sustain that speed. Exactly. Yeah. You, know, you hear so many coaches talk about, in a sense, pointing toward the end of the season. I kid you not, I have not seen a coach in all my years in the sport that has a better focus on their athletes on just de-emphasizing anything, including state, really, to some degree. It was all about Liam Anderson. It was all about nationals and winning nationals. That's what their whole focus was from day one. As we look at the teams coming through, I noticed that uh, Percival, there was a guy in between Offholder and Hunter for their for their team. Offholder was a bit back where we expected. So that either means they had a great day, they had their three, four step up to run with their one, two, or their one, two were off, and they'll be a little bit worse than expected. So we're, we'll wait in, uh, with great anticipation for those team scores, because I think it's gonna be a really tight and competitive battle. Those team scores will be held and uh, revealed as we welcome the top three teams to the podium here shortly after the uh, presentation of awards for the top three finishers here at NXN 2018. Liam Anderson will pick up the hardware for the second straight year. The trophy will be a little bit bigger in 2018 as he will take the NXN crown. American Fork Group re regrouping and, uh, you know, this... Uh, Again, this whole finish on empty is uh, just a, a great reflection of what these athletes are going through here in this uh, final moments. But uh, Liam Anderson looks uh, very happy and uh, and satisfied on a great run around this race course at Glendevere. He will be our NXN champion, and we'll hear from him shortly. It's it's just such a special thing and, and the sign of a really special athlete to you know be the top returner, have all that pressure. We, we've heard him talk about it. This is just what he's been thinking about for 365 days. And then to come in and execute your best race on that day that you've been thinking about for so long, when there was so many opportunities to maybe place a, place a step wrong, make, a, make an inopportune move, really mature, really special race from Anderson today. And Chris, from a reflection standpoint, you know, a decade now removed of winning yourself, what, what would you tell your your, your championship self in 2007, what did that do to help shape, guide, or motivate you? Anything that you remember or reflect on that, thinking about it 10 years later? You, you know, I, I mean, what I would just tell any of these kids, and I, and I hope that I did this enough at the time, is just 
treasure this moment. It's special. You might have, you have great dreams for the future. You, you're planning out, you know, I'm going to do this, this, and this, and this, this. But you, 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 tomorrow is uncertain. Treasure today when you have the opportunity to be fit and one of the best guys in the country and to do what you love. Well, not only just for the, the folks who are going to pick up some hardware today, but also for those All-Americans and also for, you know, the rest of the field here, Rich. I mean, the reflection and maybe the satisfaction for you and the folks behind the scenes that uh, put this together year in and year out is you've got, you know, 204 athletes here who have just uh, completed a, a, a grueling national championship experience. And it could be the 203rd finisher who's going to make a difference in what he anticipates to you know be the future of his running it's a motivation and an inspiration for them definitely we've had a lot of individuals here who have not been to a national meet before and it really opens your eyes and you know if you put the training in you obviously can do very well here but it also even if it's not a good day it's it's an eye-opener as to what you need to do for the following year and if, if i saw it correctly i believe so we had our our winner was anderson a senior but then we have we have sprout was a junior we have young's a junior all Reds a junior. I mean, it's a young group. A lot of these kids are coming back that are going to be, you know, first-team All-American returnees. So it bodes well for next year. But also, like you said, down the road, just an eye-opener. All right. Well, let's go down to uh, Elliot Heath, who's 